Howdy, my name is Marshall Tolleson. I'm the Ag Agent for Grayson County, and this is Live in the Field. And today, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to hand pollinate corn. Now, you might be thinking, Marshall, the wind pollinates my corn for me. Why do I need to pollinate it by hand? And there's a couple reasons for this. The first one is if your neighbor might have some genetics that you're trying to keep out of your field. In that case, it'd be a really good idea to control the pollination and make sure that their traits don't get in your corn. The second one is if you're kind of like me, and uh, playing with plant genetics just kind of gives you the warm fuzzies. You might just enjoy it. So it's a new skill you might, might try. So let's get into it. So corn has a split flower. That means the tassel up here is the male part and the ears down here are the female part. Whenever you notice the corn starts to tassel, what you want to do is start looking midway down on the stalk and see where are the ears going to be coming out. When they start coming out, they're going to produce some silks, and you want to protect those silks from being pollinated by any corn that pollen that blows in on the wind. And so what you're going to do is the best thing to do is to find a, uh, a thin paper sack and place it over the ear when they're young. I didn't have those, so what I did is I rolled up some newspaper and stapled it in the top like a cone to protect the, uh, the silks from any pollination on the wind. So you put those on the ear when they're young to make sure that foreign pollen doesn't come in. And once you've done that, wait until your tassels start producing pollen. And you can tell that whenever the anthers are kind of hanging off and when you shake it, you'll notice there's dust that kind of comes off. That's the pollen. That's what you're going to use. So whenever you're ready to actually make your cross or, or make your self-pollination, whichever one, what you're going to do is you're going to take a brown paper sack, kind of like this one, and you're going to cover up the plants that you want to use as males. And you're doing this because corn pollen is active for three hours once it comes off the tassel. And you want to make sure that the, the pollen that's in this bag that's still active and able to, to pollinate the ear is from the plant that you're choosing and not just some pollen that flew in, landed on this tassel, and you would accidentally produce uh, a cross that you weren't looking for. So when you do it, you kind of fold the bag up so that way it keeps the pollen inside and it doesn't all just fall out. Corn produces most of its pollen in the morning, so I like to do this the night before. So that way I do it the night before, I come back out the next morning, and then I make my crosses. After I do this, what I do is I like to cut the very ends off of the ear where the silks are coming out. And what that does for me is it gives me access to all of the silks that the, that the corn ear is producing. They don't all emerge all at once, so if I cut it off, I have more silks available to me. If I only pollinate 30 silks, I'm only going to get 30 kernels on that corn, because each silk equals one kernel. So then, the next morning, I'm going to find the plants that I'm pollinating today. I'm going to find my males. I'm going to undo this bag. I'm going to kind of shake it to make sure I get all the pollen that stays in there. So now I've got a bag full of pollen. I'm going to find my ear. And the silks do grow back the next day. I cut this one last night, it grew back a little bit more. So it's not like you're just killing your ear. I pour the pollen all over the silk. Cover it up as best I can. And I'm gonna staple it on this back side over here to keep it from keep any other pollen from sneaking into the bag. Whew, a better stapler. Alright, so that's how you hand pollinate corn. Uh, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week.